Well, good morning and welcome to the aforementioned Grow Omaha Show. I'm Jeff Beals, your co-host from NAI NP Dodge commercial real estate company. We're also brought to you by D&M Roofing, outstanding commercial and residential roofing services uh, for all sorts of building owners. So anyway, great, great fall morning, a great time of year, and so many wonderful things happening in our city. So you're really going to enjoy this show because we talk about the growth and development of Omaha and the surrounding area. And without any further ado, it's time to introduce my co-host, a man who is absolutely legendary when it comes to doing real estate deals and making business happen, Trenton Maggid. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jeff. Well, good morning, Trenton. And, and before we go any further, you want to share some restaurant news because we, everyone loves our restaurant news. Well, I thought that uh, this is kind of a cool thing. It's always good when you see it, when there's an empty restaurant space and you drive by it and it's full. And so last night we were at a party downtown and we drove by uh, the Flatiron, the old Flatiron restaurant, which permanently closed, as we mm-hmm. know, during COVID last year. But there's a pop-up in there, and it's called House of Ba. You can find them on Facebook, B-A-H. And it's a, a chef. It's it's African culinary heritage in the heart of the city. And they were last night, tonight, 5 to 10, and Sunday brunch, 10 to 2. So look up House of Ba. That's uh, 17th and Howard. And... Um, it's something fun, something something different. So it's good to get the word out there. And thanks for uh, to Stacy Winters for giving me the information from uh, Omaha Food Lovers. They're like almost seventy thousand members. So I I encourage everyone to to go look on Facebook to um, uh, Omaha Food Lovers. It's it's a popular site. I'm on there and uh, great culinary uh, information. I can't remember which week, but sometime in the next few weeks. Stacy is going to be on the show to talk all things restaurant. Um, that's one of my favorite. Sh- Whenever we have Stacy on the show, that's why well, I have a lot of favorite shows. But that's one of my favorite shows because we just geek out on food and we talk about all these restaurants and 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 food choices. And I'm always ravenous, <laughs> starving at the end of that show, so I have to run out and like eat the first uh, uh, bit of food that's outside of the KFAB studio. At any rate, Trenton, um, we have an official opening for Reebok at Nebraska Crossing, and Reebok will open on November 18th. This is going to be the only store that Reebok opens in Nebraska, at least as they they plan right now. And um, they've chosen Nebraska Crossing for obvious reasons. It's it's located along Interstate 80, and, uh, and it is uh, such a hot and growing place. And um, we'll be I know I keep saying this because uh, people keep saying, they say, hey, when are these big retail announcements going to happen? You've been talking about Nebraska Crossing. Yeah, we've been teasing those for a while. They're going to happen. We just are waiting for the green light. I know who they are. You know who they are. I know who they are. We know who they are. I, I guess it's killing me not to just say uh, who they are, but we know who they are, but we don't have the green light yet. So we we're going to tell you yet. We're going to tell you as soon as we can. And uh, they're cool brand names. And one of them in particular is going to be like people at whoa. Glad that one is in the market. Um, but the other one was, is a great name. At any rate, um, if you don't have your fast cash option on your Nebraska Crossing app yet, get that done. Uh, you want to go ahead and not procrastinate on that anymore. Open up your Nebraska Crossing app. Uh, a tie a credit card, enter a credit card, tie it to your app. Use that credit card every time you go to the mall, and you'll get 15% cash back. And don't forget, every once in a while, Certain retailers will even bump it up higher than 15%. But that cash back you can use at any of the retailers in the mall. And uh, Trenton, it's like free money. Yeah. Which is the best kind of money to get. All right, we're going to go into our news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. Eagle Mortgage knows mortgages, and they've known mortgages for the past 30 years. They've been doing it for a while. Holly Schneidwin and her team there are outstanding a lot of customer service focus. They realize that it can be kind of stressful buying a house or getting ready to buy a house. And so they really work with you. I know, you know, most people, they probably only buy a, a couple of few houses over the course of a, an entire lifetime. So they'll coach you through it, counsel you through it, work with you to get that pre-approval letter. FHA, VA, conventional loans are all on the table. And you can find them at Eagle Mortgage Company. Dot com. People are buying houses. I have three close friends that are buying houses right now like they're value-priced. 
Well, yeah, and we have we have just a few people in our office uh, that yeah. are buying houses. I mean, one coworker said yesterday he he closed at eight o'clock a.m. yesterday. We've got another coworker who closes on a new house on Monday. Moving closer to the office. Yeah, that's right. We expect that coworker to uh, show up at the office uh, quite a bit now Absolutely. and be early because that coworker's right across uh, Dodge Street from the office. Hope that coworker's listening. Well, Trenton, um, let's get into this and let's talk first about generations. This is a a new development by Warner Park. Yeah, a BHI uh, development. Jerry Torzon's group, very prolific developer, uh, good guy, and um, it'll be a heck of a project. This is something I was involved with early, that area over by uh, Warner Park, uh, home of the Storm Chasers, and uh, what is that, Union, Omaha Union Soccer Club? That would be Union Omaha. Union Omaha. And uh, this is 126th and Highway 370. This is the uh, baseball park area. This is the 60 acres in front of that. It's been a long time coming, but... uh, BHI is going to develop it into a mixed-use development. They're going to have about 400 apartments. They're going to have one or two parking garages at least. And they're going to have um, uh, retail, office, and uh, it, it'll be developed over a few years, I think. But uh, it's kind of a it, – everything's been kind of closing in from, from – you know, you've got Shadow Lake – on 72nd Street, you've got other developments at the interstate, and it's kind of all coming in towards this area. So uh, it'll be a good development. You got a lot of residential stock, uh, that Prairie Queen uh, development around there. You got the lakes around there, and uh, so this will be a, a good infill area. And uh, but it'll it'll be done over time. 60 acres, and Trenton, if you look at the site plan. It actually has two hotel buildings designated on there, so so that will that'll be interesting uh, because uh, hotel is or hospitality is an industry that is in great flux, but is still showing a lot of promise. It'll be interesting to see if uh, both of those hotels happen and um, and how long it'll take. Yeah, I could definitely see one or two limited service hotels there. Well, let's do some national real estate news. Uh, CoStar is always nice enough to provide us some national information on the real estate market. And I know a lot of people like hearing that. And this week we're talking about weekend travelers driving up hotel occupancy last week. This is encouraging. You know, we just mentioned hotels. The industry has been kind of experiencing a roller coaster existence over the past year and a half. It's payback for them right now. Yeah, yeah, I suppose they're, they're, it is. They're definitely charging the rates. Pay, payback in a good way for them. Well, well, well payback, yeah, because they're getting, they're getting the, the room rates. Weekly occupancy rose 2.2 percentage points last week to... 63.9%. That's respectable. Is that week over week, month over month? or uh, Week over week. And wow. room rates followed with an increase of $3.50. So that's a big jump up. Average rate is now 134 bucks for hotels nationwide, all classes of hotels combined. And weekend, weekend occupancy hits 79% a four-point increase from the previous weekend. So it went up, it went up jump over a, up. It went up about a gallon of gas. <laughs> it went up about a gallon. Uh, three fifty. That's some cheap gas. No, just yeah. kidding. <laughs> Actually, We're at like a seven-year high. In some parts of the country, uh, it is. But I noticed uh, I fueled up this week, and I think if I can remember correctly, it was two ninety-nine. Does wow. that sound about right? Two ninety-nine at at the high V by our office. There you go. So. Um, I think that's what it was. I've never been one of those persons that always remembers the gas price. I'm always one of those persons like, well, whatever it is, I've got to have it. Right. And and then at the end, you look and you say, oh, damn, that's a big that's a big gas bill. <laughs> because I also want to. You're not using the 91 octane like I usually have to. No, no, no. I use the cheapest that stuff I can possibly it. get. So what do you pay for your stuff? You, no, high, it you just high depends roller? on where I go. Well, what about what about 350? What is it? Um, whatever the good price is that. Uh, uh, Anderson uh, Convenient Mart. Yeah. All right. Well, um, you high rollers pay a lot for that gas. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I go to Anderson, so it's, it's it's good price. Okay. So let's also talk about a very well known and well loved shopping center in Omaha that's on the sale block. One Pacific Place is for sale right for now. For only thirty three million dollars, I believe. If you uh, want to have your own mall. Um, here's some information that you need to know. Uh, we'll tell you about one Pacific place here. It is 103rd and Pacific. It is listed by 
an out-of-town real estate company, one of the biggest real estate companies in the United States, JLL. The whole mall is 91,000 feet. And according to JLL's marketing materials, it's 93.4% occupied. That's I had no idea it was that high. But uh, f- they did say in the marketing information that five leases totaling 12,000 square feet have been signed so far in 2021. I don't think all of those have been announced. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see what those are. And um, they probably lost a couple of tenants during COVID and they did. whatever else. I, they they did, I, I think, a handful of them. And then there, there were a handful of vacancies prior to COVID, if I remember correctly. Now, they talk about Trader Joe's being the anchor tenant, and I would think Trader Joe's is a very desirable tenant. It's the only one in the whole metro area. So, Trenton, I don't know if you remember this. What year was One Pacific Place constructed? I, were we just around high school time? Or were We We were was, out. Trenton and I graduated in 1987 from high school. So, you think that, so I'll, I'll do the over-under. I'll do 1990. You're very close. 89. Okay. Yeah, it was 1989, which is hard to believe that that much time goes by. Because I can remember when one thirty two years. Yeah, and don't you remember when it first opened? There were so I remember many. Remember the Renstrom farm there? I remember the horse farm there. Remember they had the white cows. The cows were white that were there. No way. Yeah, it was some, some sort of herd or something like that. You that couldn't was see them in the winter. It was crazy. They blended, but uh, kind of like polar bears though. It was kind of a dirty white. You okay. could still see them in the winter, okay. but when one Pacific place opened, it was the it was the place that brought a lot of brand names to Omaha that didn't exist here prior. If I remember correctly, like even oh, like Banana Republic and Eddie Bauer and some of those, that was the first time they were ever here. Do you remember the, the – now, not all development developed that area, master plan the development, and they started it. But do you remember who, the, the, the national company that developed it? Was, it was also billed as one of the first lifestyle shopping centers. Can you, can you name the name of the, the lifestyle developer that did it? I don't, and I've got a feeling as soon as you say it, I'm going to go, oh, yeah. So, I think it was Pogan McEwen. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think I think that's – but yes. Why I remember that, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. Meanwhile, there are like thousands of Omahans taking notes right now. I need to know that Pogan McEwen for my cocktail yeah. party tonight. But, yeah, it's it's been a big success, and uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how it transitions. I think one Pacific place still has a lot of mileage on it. And uh, and has good bones and it's a great spot. It'll yeah, be it's f- one of the few cancer survivor parks next to it as well. Yeah, you don't see one of those on every corner. Oh, beautiful but, place. Um, moving right along, we've got some construction coming here to Dundee, and that is a four-story mixed-use building, going to be located right on the main drag Underwood Avenue, but a little bit east of where most of the downtown business activity is in in downtown Dundee. So uh, I'll give you a little bit of information on that. It is going to be the exact address, 4907 Underwood Avenue, street level retail with apartments on the upper floors. Developers have to tear down one existing residential building. It's either single family or could be, I'm not sure, it could be one of those single family houses that are common around here where they shoved a bunch of apartments in it. But A building that, when it was built, was at least a single-family house. That's coming down. Uh, But like I said, four stories. So this, I think, will kind of take that retail and commercial activity in Dundee and pull it a little further east. Yeah, it's good. The the density is is good as well. So uh, the other thing that might surprise some people when it comes to development projects, plans call for the Exarbon Suites by Wyndham at 7270 Cedar Street. A lot of people probably don't even know this place exists, but it's a six-story hotel. It's just kind of tucked back in there. And if you don't look and crank your head to the left on 72nd Street, if you're going north, you don't even see it. But they're going to take this and repurpose it into a 181-unit apartment building. Of those, 169 will be studio apartments, 12 will be two-bedroom apartments. Anyway, this is, like I said, six stories, 152,000 square feet. At various times, it was an embassy suites, and then for a while, it was double tree suites. But Trenton, do you remember what it was called when you and I were little kids and it was brand new? It was an actual chain. Yeah. Do you remember? H.J.'s. Huh? Howard Johnson's? No. It It could have been owned by Howard Johnson's, perhaps, but it was... 
Granada Royale. Okay. H- Hometel. Hometel. Okay. Roger I, I Olson, do you remember that? Oh, absolutely. Do you remember the Granada Royale? Oh, yeah. I remember the name. A lot of post-prom parties ended up there. Do you remember what a big deal that was when that thing opened? Yeah, it really was. We would go as a family. Was, I think, that, the first, was, the, was that the first name of it? I believe so, wasn't Granada. it? Granada. Yeah, wasn't it built to be the... Because I looked this up when we were putting the newsletter together this week, and there were there was one in El Paso, Texas. There was one in Scottsdale. There was one here and just a couple other cities. There weren't many Granada Royales, but I can remember as a little kid going in there when it was new, and it had that atrium that went all the way to the yep. ceiling, and it was decorated in a Spanish mo- motif. So, that, so the Howard Johnson, what is the Howard Johnson's now? The Howard Johnson was where the Double Tree is now okay, on. That's, uh, what, that's what confused me. Yeah, because there is a Double Tree, not Double Tree Suites, regular Double Tree on I eighty and seventy second. Right. I figure you would you would remember Granada Royale. Oh, absolutely. Well, I just grew up over by Zarbin, so yeah. it was in the neighborhood. But yeah, it was kind of a unique deal because it was like a suites hotel. I mean, it was kind of considered. Eh, eh. Yeah, it was ahead of Pretty its nice. time. They had like cocktail hours in the atrium for you know a yeah. while. I don't think they did breakfast at that point. But we're talking late seventies. Yeah, yeah, or maybe even mid seventies. Mid, to, mid yeah. to late. I think it was after the tornado. Okay, that it was built. So it had the Playboy Club across the parking lot, basically. The, the Playboy well, the, Club play, was at the Sheraton. Yeah, that was at the Sheraton at oh, oh, uh, 120th, 120th and L. 120th. Of all people, I can't believe you would screw that up. I figure I you'd know exactly where the Playboy Club was. It was Ted Seldon that had, yeah. had both of those. That's why. Well, Ted Seldon, I don't believe ever had the Granada. But he had, oh, he had the, Howard John. the Hojo yeah. by the interstate. And then, like you said, he had, they had the Sheraton. And Ted did have that Playboy Club, or they were a tenant uh, for him. Two or three of them, other places as well. Gosh, this is good memory, good memory lane stuff. So, all right, it's 923. We got to work a break in here. We're going to do that. When we come back, Trenton and I are going to talk about some interesting economic development statistics. Yes, you can use the word interesting and statistics together in the same (laughs) sentence. Don't worry. It will be interesting. You don't want to miss any of it. All sorts of stuff coming up. Stay with us. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by DNM Roofing and NAINP Dodge on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot at your service. We're from NAINP Dodge, commercial real estate company. Show is also brought to you by DNM Roofing. You can find them at dandmroofing.com. Well, we are going to talk a little bit in this segment about some uh, information that the Greater Omaha Economic Development Partnership shares with company decision makers who are thinking about relocating to Omaha, expanding to Omaha, or uh, when they're convincing these company decision makers to stay in Omaha when they're trying to retain them. So I thought some of these things would be a little bit interesting. And, you know, I was going to do a little stump the Tone Star with them. Tone Star is one of my nicknames for Trenton. <laughs> and, Great. Now everyone knows. <laughs> oh, we've said that before. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, if you, if you ever call him Tone Star, he will turn his head and acknowledge you. Um, but professionally, he's Trenton. But we're going to talk about some of the things on here. Demographics. Uh, let's see here. Projected growth in Omaha from year 2010 to year 2035 is over 20%. That's impressive. That is impressive. U.S. average is 18.5. I'm kind of thinking that U.S. average is a little high. Um, yeah, generous. The U.S. has been slowing down a lot lately in its population growth. But not, I don't Not Omaha, though. No. I mean, Omaha's population growth from the 2020 census significantly outpaced national growth. And like we said, and we are not, not trying to disparage our Iowa listeners. We love our Iowa listeners. But if you don't count the Iowa side of the metro area, which grew very, very slowly, and you just did um, Douglas and Sarpy counties, um, our growth rate would be several percentage points higher because those two counties grew like wildfire. Uh, Douglas County, 13%, and Sarpy County, 20%. So those ones were were fast, fast growers. We'll take more. Cost of, we need more. Cost of living uh, is 6.4% below the national average. And how does that compare to some other cities? The Greater Omaha Economic Development Partnership in this marketing play, uh, marketing piece provides that information for Minneapolis. So we're 6.4% below the national average, 
Minneapolis is 5.1% above. Dallas is only 6% above. I figured that would have been a little higher, but Dallas is such a great economy. Chicago, 23% above the national average wow. for cost of living. Los Angeles, 47% above the cost for the cost of living for the national average. And Trenton, what do you think San Francisco is? Ballpark. 63%. No, you're, uh, it's actually way higher than that. 92%. So, higher to live in San Francisco. Yeah, 92% higher than the national average cost of living. So these are, these are just... Now, when you start... When you, when you think about the quality of life, and Omaha really is a 20-minute city when it comes to getting around. And you, when you talk about how much time people spend in their cars, when you talk about crime rates, when you talk about uh, the, the different things that just affects everybody's psyche in... The, the COVID response and, and things and the recovery from that, Omaha is faring very well. Oh, goodness gracious. I couldn't agree more. Um, smart asset. You always have to be really careful when you say that. Smart asset. You are a smart asset to us. Thank you. Ranked Omaha as number two on the list of America's best mid sized cities for 2020. All right. Employment growth. Uh, since 2007, from 2007 to 2025, so part of this, I guess, is a projection. We're, we're futuristic here. 38,541 new jobs. And Greater Omaha produces more than $51 billion of goods and services each year. That's pretty impressive. Yes. GDP growth. Um, in a couple of particular areas. Let's actually just focus on this uh, bit, 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 two areas here. One will be finance and insurance. So GDP growth from 2015 to 2019 in the finance and, and insurance sector of the economy was 2.3% in the United States. That growth in Omaha was 21.7%. Wow. So insurance and finance have grown at pretty much 10 times the national average from 2015 to 2019. And the information industry, IT, and that tech stuff was almost as impressive. 18.3% growth in Omaha over the last five years. We've, we've, we've seen it in our business, and we've seen companies, lo local companies really expand in those finance and insurance industries and new companies coming in. Absolutely. We're seeing that. That's, that drives a lot of the construction in the marketplace. Applied underwriters. All right. 34% uh, of adults in the United States have a bachelor's degree. 38% have one in Omaha. Uh, goods and services produced per employee in the United States is just a smidge over 60,000. In Omaha, it's quite a bit more than 62,000. And let me share you just a couple more here. Uh, business climate. Cost of doing business. In Omaha, 12% better than the national average. So even better than the cost of living. I want to hear the, the comps. The comps. Uh, I don't know if I gave too many of them, but there is, there is something here that says uh, for electricity costs, Omaha commercial electricity is 20.5% below the national average. Wow. And now you, people don't understand why the uh, data centers are flocking here. One of yeah. the reasons. Yeah, that's a good point. Those those data centers love that uh, affordable electricity that OPPD provides. So finally, we'll talk about transportation. And it says Omaha has direct flights to more than 33 cities from Epley and approximately 70.1 billion pounds of cargo are in planed annually. I thought it was a little bit more. That's just in plain. Oh, in plain. Okay. <laughs> well, who the hell comes up with some of these words? What about in trucked? If in trucked, you know, my bachelor's degree was <laughs> in journalism, and if my journalism professors Dick Streckfus and Bud Pagel from the University of Nebraska were still alive, <laughs> and they heard me use the word in plain on uh, the radio, even though they were newspaper guys, they would probably well, maybe they might come back from the dead and haunt my haunt myself tonight yeah. and what the and plain okay trucks can access more than 90 percent of the continental united states within two days that's pretty impressive yes it is. So what do you think about all that are you sold i think it is i think that uh, our listeners if they're still listening uh 
got a lot of uh, good information. Don't even go there. I think that was inter- I bet you. I bet you the. I bet you the I bet you ninety percent or more of the people listening to this radio station appreciated those statistics. Absolutely. If you're a hardcore listener of Grow My Show, you appreciated that, ladies and gentlemen. So we thank you for for staying on. Everyone else switched channels. All right. Hopefully we'll get them back after the break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have a few things during the commercial real estate development spotlight. Going to talk about a couple of uh, pieces of construction progress. And at the end of the show, we've got the Turner Construction Lightning Round. Absolutely. Stay with us. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by DM Roofing and NAI NP Dodge on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals sitting next to Trenton Maggot representing NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate. We're also brought to you by DM Roofing. If you make decisions for a commercial or residential building, and you're thinking about upgrading the roof, all you have to do is talk to Eric Obrumt and his team of merry roofers over at DM Roofing. <laughs> they really do an outstanding job. I mean, Trenton used them not too long ago on his own house. Perfect job. And um, if you have a commercial building, they have this really cool preventative maintenance program that has proven over the last couple of years to save commercial property managers and commercial building owners an awful lot of money. And so we strongly recommend you can find them online at dandmroofing.com. That's dandmroofing.com. All right, let's do a commercial real estate development spotlight. This is always brought to you by Noddle Companies. And, um, you know, you've, you've heard Jay Noddle on our show. He's the head of Noddle Companies, and they're doing all these cool projects in Omaha and uh, in other states around the country. And and as we've we've told you before, Perhaps their biggest and best known project here in Omaha would be Exarban Village. And we have a couple updates for you from Exarban Village. I actually went there yesterday um, over the lunch hour. I uh, had a real nice lunch at Exarban Village and um, had some had some soup and salad. I, I went healthy. You didn't go sm- smash Omaha yet. I have not, but I walked into the Interrail Food Court and smash Omaha was open in business and looking good and I really really wanted to try it but I had had a high calorie breakfast and um, I figured I better I better go soup and salad for lunch but I will get to smash so but I put my head actually my whole body into the Kincader the new Kincader place it is really nice inside so so you you walk in and and uh, right inside the door to the left they have merch you can get the is this t-shirts. Is in the HDR building? The Kincader is in the old Live Lounge okay, that's space. Right. And um, so so you you can definitely tell it was Live Lounge because they haven't changed the floor plan. You went to Live Lounge. Sure. Remember, remember that, little, that r- little room they had in the back? Yep. They still have that. And uh, then like a lot of open seating area. The bar's in the same spot Live Lounge bar was. They've got the patio, but they redecorated the look so it's kind of got the Kincader feel to it. They have a mural on one of the back walls. It's very colorful. And then um, they have all of the Kincader beers right there on tap. It's, it's really great. And then they also have a full bar, too. You can get your cocktails and, and if you're not a beer Check it person. Out, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And then uh, the patio outside Interrail. Man, that is just a fun place. Yeah, it is. It's just a good vibe. Did you ever sit out there in the evening? Yeah. yeah it's a fun place. And they've got the – yesterday they had the – now, yesterday was a little windy, uh, so the fire pits weren't – too populated, but uh, I think that wind died down quite a bit last night, so I'm sure it was it was hopping last night. And then that pop up park to the north, have uh, they have that With one the Airstream little Airstream trailer? And the Airstream trailer was open. Sunnies they were serving food and drink out of that, but they have that little glass uh, greenhouse. Yeah, and you can actually King sit Horn in Gardens. There. Yeah, you have those little table and chairs there. You can sit there surrounded by a jungle. And then the other thing at Exarban Village, I want to bring you up to speed. Saffron, which is the upscale Indian cuisine restaurant right next to Herb Sant, build out is well underway. That'll be good. I cannot I, wait. I love Herb Saint. And, and I can't wait for Saffron to open um, just to because I love Indian food and uh, I'm looking forward to trying a very gourmet version of one. And supposedly they're going to have a real nice cocktail bar there too, which doesn't hurt either. And uh, that is your commercial real estate development spotlight brought to you by Noddle Companies. You can learn more about Noddle Companies by going to, well, noddlecompanies.com. But they are a full-service real estate development company headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska. Trenton, I drove by the Med Center this morning, and 
we told people a couple weeks ago that the old Bank of the West commercial federal building uh, right to the south, there were two Bank of the West commercial mm-hmm. federal buildings. The one to the south had fence around it a couple weeks ago. It's gone. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. my own sound. of. It is gone. So I don't know. We'll find out what the plans are for the older Bank of the West building. That um, is still standing, but uh, we'll so see. So the style's coming back. Actually, you're, I think you're 100% correct. I mean, that's kind of an historic building now, but oh well, if it goes, it goes, life goes on. Moxie by Marriott <clears throat> has gone vertical downtown. And Excellent. they they've got the vertical supports for the ground floor. They it's still have 12th, 13th and Harney. It would be 12th, yes, 12th. <clears throat> it was where the old diner was located. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks it Russian looks great. national building that's still pretty much vacant. Yes, very much so. And then um Steel House Omaha, the steel at Steel House Omaha, it looks really cool. I mean, that is a that's going to be a sizable the building. Erection has started, ladies and gentlemen. That will be a sizable building, and that steel is is looking pretty impressive. All right, we don't have too much time left, and we want to make sure we have enough time for the lightning round because I'm looking at the script here, and there's all sorts of items on the lightning round docket, including restaurant news. Everyone likes restaurant news. So don't go away. The lightning round from Turner Construction is just over the horizon. You're listening to Jeff Beals and Trenton Magid on Grow Omaha, brought to you by NAI NP Dodge and DNM Roofing. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Magid here. And this is the lightning round brought to you by Turner Construction. Turner Construction is one of the world's biggest and most influential construction firms based in New York City, and they have adopted Omaha as if it was like their hometown. Um, They love this community and have been uh, really rolling up their sleeves, working hard, trying to make a bigger and more accomplished and experienced construction workforce. That's no small task because unemployment in Omaha is really low. There's a shortage of people and of talent. And Turner Construction is saying, hey, for our city to keep growing, we have to have lots of outstanding construction workers and tradespeople. They're doing all of that, working with the local colleges. And let's not forget the projects. I mean, the projects they have going on in the area are really impressive. And it doesn't matter whether, you know, you want to build something as big as the multi-billion dollar Sarpy County Data Center or you want to renovate the inside of your office building. Um, Turner Construction does both of those things and everything in between. And uh, we're proud to have Turner as our lightning round sponsor. Let's talk a little bit about restaurants. Um, First of all, uh, Trenton, we... Uh, have Addie's Sports Bar is going to build their own building in southwest Omaha. Yeah, Tim Addison has done a really good job. they they got that beautiful one down on 10th Street um, and and a few few others. And uh, this is one that in front of the old Super Saver, which is now a Nebraska Medicine um, facility, and this kind of a sloped area. This is north. Most people know where the the DMV is over there. But they're talking about doing a, a rooftop uh, section to it, so it'll be a bar, restaurant, obviously, but but the rooftop will be really cool, and um, sounds like it's going to be uh, uh, open next year. So, the groundbreaking is expected for maybe spring or early summer. Yep. It sounds like, and this this lot where they're building is it's been vacant. For a while, and so for a long a, time, a, a client nice of ours, in. yeah, a client of ours had it, and it was multi generation. Um, and this is the last lot they, the the families that developed it, the um, the Moritz and and Russell families developed this area, and uh, so it was exciting to see that last lot go. And this presumably would replace the Addies and Old Millard. Yes. Okay. And then they also have locations downtown. That one downtown is really cool looking with that big patio that they have. Another really nice one that I've been to several times on 204th Street by Elkhorn South High School. Mm-hmm. And then, what, one up on Maple or something like that? I believe that's where the other one is. All right, Chippy's British Market has been a smash hit since it opened last spring. In fact, I can remember when it opened, um, our own Brad Williams went there and shot a photo of hundreds of people. Wait, hundreds of people. Who would have thought? 
in line to go buy British stuff. And uh, I mean, Britain's cool and uh, I love Great Britain, but who, people wait in line to buy British stuff. And apparently it's just been so popular, they decided we've got to expand. And so the owner has leased the two bays on either side of him. He's, he's located in Westwood Plaza at about 123rd and West Center Road. And uh, he has, uh, he's leased the two bays on, on either side of him. One, he's serving as a warehouse because he's got, he goes through the inventory so fast. Plus, he wants to open up an online option to sell all over the country. And then the other side next year is going to become a restaurant. Wow. So you can go get British breakfast. Uh, you can get British food. And British food is better than it is disparaged all the time to be. Yeah, it is. Because some of it's, uh, I mean, let's face it, some of it's rather bland and blah, but some of it's kind of good. There's a fourth bay they could open up like a orthodontia clinic or something. Or... Now, that's not nice. Sorry. <laughs> no, where are you going? That is not nice to our British friends, but uh, sometimes the truth hurts. You, gotta, yeah, you watch too much Austin Powers, I guess. And then he is also the ownership of Chippies is planning on uh, expanding, having bricks and mortar stores in lots of the cities around Omaha. So, yeah, I think I think they've stumbled onto something pretty cool. Have you been in there? I have not. You should pop your head in there sometime. It's really cool. I went one time, and I I bought a tart, uh, baked item, and uh, they had all sorts of candy and little treats. And was it a sweet tart? Yeah, it was very good. I liked it. I liked it. So we have a new pizza place coming to far southwest Omaha. A lot of people – now, I live in far southwest Omaha, so uh, I used to go to Pudgy's Pizzeria. Yeah, everybody talked about Pudgy's. It was so good back in its day. Um, there was a guy whose nickname was Pudgy, and, and he opened it. Super charismatic, friendly guy. I mean, I swear a lot of people went there just to go hang out with Pudgy. Sadly, he died of cancer, and then uh, the, the place was still good. It just wasn't quite the same, and then it eventually went out of business. New one coming in called Rebel Monkey Pizza. Sounds delicious. And it is under development. Build-out is going on. We'll talk more about it uh, when it opens. I just got uh, uh, someone just sent me the name and contact information of the owner, and so we'll talk to her and get some more information and tell you more when it gets closer. But uh, for pizza fans in far southwest Omaha, you are in luck. Omaha Bakery has uh, opened its location in Bellevue, and they're going to have a – ribbon cutting for that location on November 2nd. That's always good. Yeah, then they are going to keep open the new-ish location. Uh, I can't remember what that street is, but it's by, um, it's it's west of, the you know the Menards at 204th and West Dodge Expressway? Mm -hmm. It's west of that, up the hill by the Mark Bowling and Entertainment yeah. Center. It's it's over in that area. I can't remember the name of that street. What about is 72nd? it Veterans Do they close 72nd? That's what they said when they originally announced Bellevue. I don't know if that's changed or not, but uh, so I, I don't want <laughs> right. to. I'm always nervous about saying that a restaurant right. or a business closed if it hasn't. But that I know that's what they originally announced. If they haven't uh, changed that, so Airlight Plastics is a very good Omaha company that uh, a lot of Omaha people probably don't even know much about. They're located not far from Epley International Airport, and they have acquired a company out of Oxnard, California, called Cosmetics Specialties International. It's a leading provider of high-quality packaging to the beauty and personal care industry. Hopefully they bring more jobs to Omaha. I suspect there's a chance, but uh, that's always good. It's always good to see the Omaha company on the acquiring side. Yeah, absolutely. You don't see it all the time. <laughs> the equation, yeah. We prefer it when it goes that way. And then um, I want to talk to you about real estate markets. Um, there was a study that came out, not a study, a report that came out just within the last week from the National Association of Realtors. So this is NAR's Commercial Market Insights Report, says that Omaha is one of the 10 top real estate markets in the United States right now. I believe it. We we'll see a ton of activity. The commercial side's just as busy as the residential. Music's done. We're out of here. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by DM Roofing, NAI NP Dodge, and Turner Construction. We'll chat with you next week at 9 o'clock, right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.